some beautiful lines today. Oh, I like your red rose. Yes, yes, yes. We have a wedding to attend. Hey, really? Really spooky wedding? I know I should sound a little more scared and a little less happy about this, but we are making a glowing eye, sugar skull inspired wedding cake. Or a really cool creepy birthday cake. I could use it for either. Aside from my bridal bouquet and a large cake board, I'm going with black, spooky. You're also going to need sugar skulls. So I just used a skull jello mold and then I used white candy melts and colored candy melts, cast the skull out of white and decorated it in all of those pretty colors using either a snap seal bag. I made a whole video on this which I'll link to down below if you want a little bit of a more detailed instruction. You'll need some chocolate ganache and I tinted mine black using a little black food coloring. I've got six 12 inch by 12 inch layers of my chocolate cake recipe which I colored with a little black food coloring. I'll leave a link to the recipe down below, or you can get it in the Sweet Celebrations cookbook, and each layer of cake is one full batch of recipe. Battery operated tea light candles, some flour foam, and of course, those beautiful, kind of creepy looking flowers. So I'm ready to be married. I have my very high end expensive looking flower bouquet. The only thing left to organize for our sugar skull wedding is the cake. Let's get started. I'm gonna take my six layers of cake and I'm gonna level them off. You can either use a cake leveler or a serrated edge knife here, but try to get all of the layers about the same height. It's up to you if you'd like to brush it with a little sugar syrup. If I'm serving mine the same day, I generally don't, but if I'm gonna serve it a day or two later, then I like to give it just a little bit of extra moisture. Take a little bit of your black ganache and just spread it onto the cake board, and then you can layer all of your nice level cake layers. Make sure they're in the middle of the board. A thin coat of ganache in between. I don't want to go too thick with this coat of ganache because I've got relatively heavy cake layers and I'm not putting any center support. So I don't want any of that ganache to go bulging out the sides and creating little wrinkles in my finished cake. I prefer ganache in my larger cakes over something like a buttercream, especially if they're not supported because ganache actually sets quite firm and hard and it supports the structure of your cake quite nicely. Once they're all stacked, put a nice crumb coat of ganache all the way around the outside edge to catch any crumbs and to fill in any gaps and pop that off into the fridge for 20 minutes. Your masks. I made four of these, but you guys get creative. You don't have to have them all looking exactly the same and this is the most fun part of this video. You can also do them well in advance. This is the guy that I showed you guys how to make in a full tutorial. So if you want a super in-depth video that shows you how to make this one, I will link to that down below. But so that I can show you guys some of the examples that I made, this one is like my more pastel skull. This guy here I went with like blue and green is a really strong color. To paint your black one with just its white details, I literally just used a toothpick and snap seal bags. And that's the same for all of these throughout. Toothpicks and snap seal bags, really easy. For my final one, I went with red and orange with a hint of purple as my dominant colors. And I went a little further with this guy and used an edible image, which I just affixed with a little bit of water. The edible image kind of looks like a tattoo rose and really fits in with that sugar skull theme. I let my cake completely set and you can fridge it or you can freeze it and then I'm going to add my good coat of ganache if you can have a good coat on such a spooky looking cake. So for this the ganache is going to set quite quickly because the cake underneath is very cold. I am slathering a generous amount, more than I think I'm going to need. And then I'm going to use either a metal ruler or you can use a cake scraper or even a spatula here to really smooth off the sides. I like to fill a tray with boiling hot water and dip my metal ruler into it, using that to do my final smooth, kind of like a very hot concrete leveler. Pop that cake back off into the fridge for a minimum of an hour. You really want that ganache to be super nice and set before we go doing any of our mask details. Before we go attaching anything else, we're gonna take those tea light candles and just kind of protect them from touching the cake. So you wanna activate them or turn them on and then take the bottom side with the little on off switch and just dip it in a little bit of melted white candy and then straight down onto a piece of parchment. I'm doing this so that no part of my actual little candle, the mechanism, the switch, and heaven forbid the battery actually comes into contact with my cake. It's kind of protected in a little layer of melted white candy melt. 
you're gonna let them set at room temperature or pop them off into the fridge to set, you want that candy melt really nice and hard. I'm gonna use those tea lights to make the eyes glow in each of my sugar skulls. But first I wanna position them to make sure that I'm happy with where the lights need to go so the eyes are in the right place. You kind of want the chin to be resting on your cake board. That just helps to support the weight of it. These are actually surprisingly heavy. So just position him and then you wanna make sure that he's centered. Take a paintbrush or a pen or something and just poke straight in the center of his eyes. Taking two of my tea light candles, I'm just gonna apply a very small amount of melted candy and then I'm gonna try and lighten them up so that the glowing center of the tea light is right where the hole that I just poked is. Something a little bit like that. Now you wanna take a hot skillet or a fry pan to just melt slightly through those edges, making a sticky surface, and then I'm gonna place it directly onto the side of the cake so those little tea light candles are poking through like little glowing eyes and our candy sugar skull is stuck in place. Balancing it in the hand that you know you want to stick it onto the cake with, so for me that's my right hand, is the easiest way for these. Take a clean paper towel or a clean tissue and use that so that you're not melting through or smudging any of your design. And just gently, but firmly, press up against the cake to make sure you've got a really nice, solid stick. I love this. I think it looks amazing, but of course, it's not quite finished yet. Take your half sphere of flour foam or styro and give it a good double wrap in plastic wrap. Make sure that it's definitely wrapped and really well covered at the base so that you don't get any of those little flecks of styro in the cake. Crunch, but not in a good way. So I've got all of my flowers and I'm actually using fake flowers here. You can use real if you want, but I found a super great assortment of color by going fake. I'm gonna start with some of my larger flowers and then kind of fill it out with some of my smaller ones once it's actually on the cake. We are chocolatiers, we're cake makers, and now we're flower arrangers. And I honestly think I did a pretty good job considering I am not trained in this area. So you can take that now. If you wanna secure it, you can secure it just to a little ganache so it sticks on top of the cake, but really it should just sit in place. As a very last thing, because all of my masks are all different colors, I wanna make sure that I've got a little pop of each of the colors from each of the masks going on somewhere in the flower arrangement above. So I've put a lot of my big flowers in, but I'm just gonna take this opportunity to just add in a couple of little accents of some of my smaller flowers just to really make it pop. Not that it doesn't already. I love how this looks. I love the fact that it glows. I actually didn't know that sugar skull weddings were a theme, but if they are and you're thinking about having one, this is an amazing wedding cake. It's also a fabulous birthday cake, great for Halloween and Day of the Dead is coming. So if you guys celebrate in any way, I feel like this would be the perfect cake. Things that can be done well in advance, the flower foam, the making of the little flower ball all the way across the top and making all of those sugar skulls. I actually made those over time in the last week. Putting this cake together, actually very simple. The most time consuming thing is literally the detailing on those skulls. So I feel like if you make a Friday night of it in front of the telly, you could get them knocked over and then putting the cake together day off. It's not gonna take you very long at all. Hope you guys have enjoyed our glowing sugar skull, day of the dead inspired wedding celebration cake. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for two new videos. I'll leave a link down below to the sugar skull video if you wanna see how I made that one in detail. Make sure you check out all of my Halloween videos because there are dozens of them from years gone and they're all still very relevant. Have a great day and thanks very much for watching. I was wondering what this was for. Bye guys.